rarest things are really the simplest things, aren't they? And I want to preach a message this morning, basically share really, uh, about a very simple thing, but a very profound thing, and that is the name of Jesus. Um, name, names, yes. Names are, in, the, in Bible times, names are very important. Like they mean something. Today it's a little bit different. I mean, I've got a name that doesn't mean anything really. That's my natural name, but there's a name. And uh, they're, they're in, as I say, in the Bible days, they're significant things. And when they, when they were spoken, you know, you had like like Jesus was the he was called not Jesus, but he was called the son of Joseph. And they knew exactly who he was. They knew his potential and all that because of his name. And then we see God. He changed some names, didn't he? From Abram to Abraham, from Saul to Paul, because to God, names are very important. Even to to the statement where Jesus has a name that is greater than any other name. And the simple, wonderful, profound thing is that he's given us that name, which is above all other names. Uh, so I just want to unpack that, as they say, and, and uh, have a look at that. I mean, there was a... You remember when Peter was walking to church and he did something that had never been done before. Absolutely profound. He went up and there's a man who's crippled and Jesus went up and he, and he said, well, uh, such as I have... In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the man jumped up totally whole. Yes. Isn't that profound? Incredible. Such power in a name. Right? Uh, and when he was challenged about it, he said, well, this is what I did. It's faith in the name. I had faith in that name that when that name was spoken, the Holy Spirit was released and we saw signs and wonders that proved his presence was there. The church didn't, uh, the religious church today, of course, didn't like it, did they? So they tried to stop them. What they tried to stop them from doing was to speak that name, you know? Um, when you look at the names in the Bible, you see right at the beginning, you see God, God exposed himself through a name, and that name contained the need for that particular situation. But as you go through the Bible, you find God's got a whole stack of names, hasn't he? And all those names are building in us an understanding of just who God is. And then when you come to the name of Jesus, you find that all the names in the Bible right up to that time are all included because that, that, that name contains all of the other names. That name is the name above every name. And that's the name of the Saviour of the world. It's the name of the person who has come into our life. Um, when Moses, uh, when God came to Moses in Exodus 6 3, this is what God said. I appeared, this, this is profound. I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, Lord, I was not known to them. So the likes of Abraham and, and Isaac and Jacob. They saw and they knew their God as God Almighty. And being God Almighty, they saw in their lives, in the history, God did incredible things because he's God, right? But then when Moses came in the scene, Moses came to a place of, of such closeness, such connection with God, that God did something he hadn't done with those guys. As God said there in that, in that scripture, God revealed his own name to Moses. God was known as God Almighty by the people, but Moses knew him by the name that he had given Moses specifically. You remember at the, at the, at the burning bush, and Moses had that encounter there with God, and God started to give him the, the plan for Moses' life and to go to Egypt and set God's people free. And Moses said a very, very clever question, didn't he? He said, well, God, who will I say sent me? And God told him his name. The name to Moses at that particular time was, I am that I am. And so you see Moses going to Egypt, and you see God Almighty do incredible things, but there were times when God did incredible things, but not, not as God Almighty, he did them through the man Moses. 
right? All those plagues and that. Moses knew the name. He knew the person of God. And so God was able to move through him. So there's a, there's a, what, I, what I want to bring out today is basically we all, remember we got saved, we all came into the knowledge of God Almighty when we first got saved. We knew that God was Almighty. That was God. But then as time went on in our relationship with God Almighty, he starts to reveal himself as a personal God, that he wants you to know him personally and to come to the place where you come to the revelation of his name so that you, can, you know God Almighty in your life but you can also know God personally because you know his name and as we know under the new covenant look what he does with his name he, he, he gives us his name does he not so that we can, we can walk in relationship with God through revelation putting our faith in God that when we speak that name we release the spiritual power of the Holy Spirit to, to achieve what that, what that statement is that we, we ask for, be it for healing, provision, whatever it is, in our relationship with him. It, it all comes to having the revelation that our, I now know the name of God. I know God, but do I know his name in a way in which I can walk with him, relate to him, and when I say, in Jesus' name, we see God manifesting his presence in all the ways that he can. You know? That, that is an incredible thing that, that the new covenant has brought for us to do. And uh, that's what I want to share. In Exodus 33, uh, back, back to Moses. In Exodus 33, we see Moses, he's asking God, because God's going to continue to take them out, of the, out into the promised land and he's saying, God, I want to know your ways. If, if you just teach me your ways, God, I'll, I'll, I'll be okay. So teach me, my, my, teach me your ways. And um, God says this. Where is it? Ha <laughs> uh, ha. God. God tells him that I will be with you. And by the way, Moses, it'll be okay because I know your name. That's what God said to Moses. Now, is he talking about the name Moses? No, he's not talking about the name Moses. The name Moses was the name of that man, but God knew Moses by a different name. All right? And God knew that Moses, because he knew the name, he knew the nature, he knew the the spiritual identity of that man. He knew that Moses would stand and he would go through the fire. He would do everything that, that he could to, to work with God so that God could achieve the purpose for God's people. So God knew Moses. But Moses wanted to know God. So when, he, when, when Moses heard this, he switched from, I want to know your ways. He said, God, please, yeah. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. We go to Exodus 33. I brought this in a bit soon, Gary. Exodus 33, verses 18 to 23. And this is Moses' response. Here's God. He knows you. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your strength. He has a name for you. It's not the name you have. It's the name he has for you. He's your father. Our earthly father gave us a name, but our heavenly father, our true father, has a name for you. Right? So he knows Moses' name, and Moses then says, okay, uh, show me your glory. And in Exodus 33, verses 18 to 23, it says this. Moses responded. Then sh I'm reading from the, the New Living Version. Moses responded, then show me your glorious presence. The Lord replied, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will call out my name, Yahweh, before you. For I will show mercy to anyone I choose, and I will show compassion to anyone I choose. But you may not look directly at my face, for no one may see me and live. The Lord continued, look, stand near me on this rock, as my glorious presence passes by, I will hide you in the crevice of the rock and cover you with my hand until I pass by. 
Then I'll remove my hand, let you see me from behind, but my face will not be seen. Moses said, God, show me your ways. God says, it's, it's all right. I'm with you and I know who you are. That's God's foundation. Then Moses says, God, show me your glory. The glory of God, in essence, is it, it's a word that encompasses everything that God is. I want to see the true you. I want to see the, the, the reality of the aspect of who you are 100% now. The glory of God. And God says, I'll show you. I'll show you my glory. And he proclaimed his name. He said, this is, this is who I am. I'm going to unpack my name to you. I'm going to tell you who I am. I am all goodness. I am all grace. I am all mercy. I am all love. I am all forgiveness. I am life. I am everything that Jesus expressed. That is who my name is. Right? So when, when Moses could, could come into a situation, he'd be relating to God, and he'd see a need, he would speak in the name of Jesus because he knew what, what, what was in the name. And when he spoke the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit was able to be released through that name because the Holy Spirit responds to the name. At the name, every knee bows. Even the Holy Spirit. The Father responds to that name. Even Jesus. And we do too. So all of a sudden, Moses had, had a... a a capacity in his relationship with God to direct the Holy Spirit to cause God to be glorified. Because he knew that name. He had that revelation. He asked God. We, we know God Almighty, but do we know the name of God? And I'm not saying the name Jesus, and yet that is the name. What I'm saying is, do you, know the, do you know what's in the name of Jesus? And you'll never get it out of a book. It comes by revelation. And, and all we need to do is from the very depths of our hearts sincerely seek God for his name to be revealed to us individually. And if you know the revelation of the name of Jesus in whatever aspect it is, you will see signs and wonders follow your word because it's at that name. Not just God Almighty, but I had the revelation of the name of Jesus. And as we start in that revelation and we participate in a walk where we are expressing the name of Jesus, so our life opens up and we grow from one measure of glory to the other and you start to see greater and greater signs and ones happen because you're acting in that place of exercising the name, not just tacking it on to a prayer. I really do think we've got to back the front, you know. We pray and then we say, in Jesus' name. But I really think we should say, in Jesus' name, then stop and wait to find out what Jesus wants us to pray. Because it's only what, what he wants us to pray that will be answered. So it, it's like we walk the Jesus walk. We, we, we express his name to cause us to, to reflect on that and see what the Holy Spirit's saying to us. Because after all, that's what it's all about. Um, in, in a sense, it's like we, we have an engagement and we're engaged to Jesus. But then all of a sudden, we get married through revelation. And when you get married, you take on the, the, the other person's name, do you not? So we, we know him as God Almighty and so on, but to know him as, as, as one where I have the, the right to express his name and see him do great and mighty things through me. A bit like adoption. You know, remember the disciples, they, they were talking to Jesus and he sent them out and when they came back, they said, Lord, he didn't go with them. They came back to Jesus, the person, and they said, Lord, even the demons are subject to your name. Like, you're there having a, a coffee. We go out and even the demons are subject to us because we use your name. So there's Jesus and there's the name. 
there is you, not trying to tangle you up here, but there is you the person, but there's also your name. Right? The two and yet one. Um, but there's a power in the name spiritually. Because after all, what, what, what is the name? It's, it's a description of, of a person or thing, isn't it? it it's, a, it's a summary of, of the spiritual reality of that person, the depth they have, and, and so we can grow in it. When, when Jesus came to earth, Father God gave him. When the Son of God came to earth, Father God said, his name shall be Jesus, right? Because God knew, Father God knew, that in this one, his son, would contain all of the other names that have been used under the old covenant, were all encompassed in that one name. How wonderful. John 16, verses 23 to 24. It says, at that time, Jesus said, you, you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth. You will ask the Father directly and he will grant your request because you use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name and you will receive and you will have abundant joy. There's nothing more fulfilling than seeing a need and knowing that Jesus has has answer that need and as you relate to him you get the sense that you speak my name you have permission to use my name and if you use my name I will do it for you so we, we say I ask Jesus and when he says yes I can do that I'm being given permission I have the right now as as a child as a, as a, a joint heir as a as a brother, a little brother to big Jesus, if you like. But I'm allowed to use his name. Isn't that fantastic? Just, just, you know, like this is what we've been given under the new covenant. Wonderful. I can live my life from his life, living it his way, because I have his name. In um, Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20, it talks about Baptize, go into the world of will and baptize them into the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It doesn't say baptize into the names of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It says baptize into the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The name that encompasses the life of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. When we are led by the Spirit to say, in Jesus' name, we are opening up that situation to all the provision of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Because you can't have one without the other. Can you? Because the three are one and one are three. It's just nice to know we had three. <laughs> um, so that name includes all that they are. It includes their presence. It includes their glory. Um, you can even, you know, you can, you can, in, in meetings, you can, you can proclaim the name Jesus, and you'll see the presence of God can become manifest. It depends on the person. It depends on the place they're with, with this, with God in relationship with Him. As we grow in our relationship with Him, He drops things into our lives because he wants to change us from glory to glory into the very image of Christ. And so you, you find you go to some meetings and some will, will come and say, in Jesus' name, and you'll see a different thing. You'll sense God's presence. You'll sense it's like all of a sudden, he, he's, by saying that the name of Jesus, we're opening up ourselves that the Spirit can now move amongst our midst and so we start to actually sense God's presence, you know. And, and if, if a man's got a certain kind of anointing, you know, some people you can see a man coming to a church and there's a few unsaved people there and you can preach your heart out and no one takes any notice. But then some rat bag comes in that's got nothing on their life except they've been in relationship with Jesus and they have an anointing for souls. 
And no matter what they say, what they do when they say, anyone want to know this Jesus? Hands go up and you think, wow, how did that happen? But it happened because there's anointing on all of us. And the anointing is there to develop different aspects of Jesus so that we can meet all, all needs according to his riches in glory. So it's a powerful place to live in relation to be looking for Jesus to speak and give us the revelation of his name. It is not just a title. Not a title. It's more than a title. Just like we have a name that's our title and we respond to it. But there's a name. Like, try it this way. Um, think of a person and think of their name, but then think of a word that would sum up that person that's not their name. You know? I used to do a lot of work with Indigenous people. Every Indigenous person has a nickname. The best I ever heard. This guy is a great, tall, street, fantastic guy. But I never knew his name. I only knew his nickname because everybody called him by the nickname because that's who he was. Right? His mum had given him a name. Her name was Barbara. You know what they call this guy? Duva. That was his name, Duva. Now if you're as old as me, you'll know what that means. There's a word used to be called Duvalaki. Anyone know what a Duvalaki is? A Duvalaki is something. You know you've got it, but you don't know where to put it, and you don't know what to do with it. So Duva was a 100% Duvalaki. He was the most beautiful guy, but he just hang around. <laughs> and, and it was right. That's what he was. He was a Duva, a Duva lackey. And I'm sure you've been called names. I'm not many negative names. I'm talking about positive. You understand, don't you? Uh, but, but you may have a name. Or you, if you, you may have thought of someone. You think, you know what? Gentle sums him up. Or, you know, aggressive. Or something like that. Should we have a game with that right now? I was just speaking and I looked over and I saw Dom. Uh oh, you leave me out of this. It's your message. <laughs> well, all right, we won't say it publicly. But, uh, <laughs> you still think it. Yeah, but, but there'd be many names we'd have for the one person whose name is Dom, wouldn't we? Because of our experience with the guy, right? True? Well, Jesus knows your name. It wouldn't be lovely if you knew the name he was calling you. Maybe you do. Yeah. And he wants us to know his name. Aspects of the name of Jesus. So when we speak that word, the Holy Spirit works through that aspect of him that we know and causes it to become alive, manifest in our lives. Um, <clears throat> you know... In John 5.43, Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. A name that through faith in our relationship with Jesus, we can develop to see greater and greater things. He even had to. You know, you know the, first, the first miracle he did was he turned water into wine. Now, in my sight, that's a pretty big miracle. But to him, that was just the beginning. You know? Because think of his life. He was born a man, but he had the Holy Spirit within him. And it didn't take him long to realise that God Almighty was wanting to relate to this young fella who was the Son of God. So Jesus spent time and he grew in his knowledge and his understanding of God and God's grace. And so as he grew, he got to, to the place where he went to be baptised. And when he went to be baptised, amazing, the heavens opened. As he came up out of the water, we see the Holy Spirit came down and he came into the full relationship with this person of the Holy Spirit. It's like he knew the Holy Spirit all his life, but when he got baptised, he, he was fully immersed in it and he knew the fullness of who the Holy Spirit is personally, intimately. And then, they, then they, as the heavens were open, the Father said, this is my son and, and, and Father esteemed him 
and, and, and made him realize deep, deep, like, I know I'm a son of God, but, but how much of a son of God? And at that moment, Jesus realizes, I am the son of God. And, and he has this incredible relationship with the Holy Spirit. They're so close, so one. And now he knows who he is. He has a name, he has an identity, he has a life, he has a purpose. And so what does he do? He's led by that same Spirit. Now he hears the Spirit deeply. The Holy Spirit leads him out into the desert and he learns to, to, to live in the wonder and the power of who he is as the Son of God. And when he speaks in his name, he speaks and he, and he, and he sees so much and he comes out of that and, and he comes out in the power of the Spirit. And now he can go forth and do it. And he grows and grows until in the end, the greatest of all miracles, he died and he rose from the dead. From turning water into wine, he's, he's, he's conquering death. So it, it's a name that Jesus grew more and more into, where he could say, my name is above every name, even death. Water into wine? How would you like to do that? I'd like to. Um, so, so there's Jesus. He, he's in this great place. And so, you know, under the old covenant, you could uh, delegate someone authority by writing out a document of all the details that you wanted to give them authority over. And then they'd use their signet ring and they'd seal the document with the signet ring. And whenever you went out with that, and you showed that document, that authority, right? That gave you the right to whatever you were pursuing. Now, under the New Covenant, we find in Ephesians, it talks about the Holy Spirit is the guarantee. He is our signet ring, if you like. He's the seal of promise. So it's been given, the right to use the name of Jesus has been given to us. Now it's for us to, to, to begin to get the revelation of the name where it can be a living aspect of our life. How, how can that happen? We pray. We say, Lord, I ask you for the revelation of your name. You know my life, you know the situation I'm in, and I ask you, you know, he, he's God, he's sovereign, he will do certain things, but his desire, Jesus' desire, is that he would do things in and through us. He gets a greater kick out of that than he does out of just doing it himself. He loves to, to, to relate with us in such a way that he says, come on, I'll give you my name, I'll give you my ability. You do it, and I'll do it through you, right? Julie, Julie and I have a, um, we've got a son, and we adopted him. And so, of course, when we adopted him, he came under our name. We went to court, and we legalised it, and so his name, his name's Ben, and he's called Ben Thornley. Well, when he was 16, he decides to go into the Navy. So he went to the Navy and he did his six years training, he came out qualified, and he came home. So he's homeless for a while and he said, well, I guess I'd better go and get a job. And he said, yeah, right here, mate. This is up in Mildura. So he went out and he, and he lined up some appointments to, to look for a job. But one of them was with this big electronic place. So he went along there and it, for the interview, and he's there for the interview, and the guy sits down, he's got a pen and paper, he says, okay, mate, he says, right, what's your name? And Ben said, Ben Thornley. And the guy looked at me and said, uh, is your dad Barry Thornley? And Ben said, yeah. Oh, well, he said, you got the job. <laughs> Didn't ask him any, anything else, he just said, you got the job. You know, Ben came home and he, he just goes, dad, dad, I got the job because of your name. The bloke didn't ask anything else, didn't know whether he could do the job or not, but because he had the name. Now what Ben didn't know was the boss of this company was a Christian. He didn't come to our church, but he knew me, because I was past the church, and, and he knew me by name. And so when he, when, he, when, he, when he saw this young fella, he knows the fella's son, uh, sorry, the fella's father, so on the, 
on the, the what that name meant to him meant hey he's a chip off the block he'll do me because you'll know he's honest hard working and all the things that we all are right so it's the name Ben's, that was years ago, uh, actually Ben was over here not so long ago and he said, do you remember when I went for that job? He still can't get over the fact that a name has such power. It really does. Okay? Yeah. So, a name is like when Jesus gives you the revelation of his name, he's giving you permission to use his name so we have access into the kingdom of God. Wow. Like calling on the name of Jesus. You know, when we first got born again, we called on the name of Jesus to become born again. And Jesus came in our life and we realised that God Almighty was in our lives. But then after a time we got to the place where we don't call on the name of Jesus, well, we do still, but we can now proclaim the name of Jesus. Wouldn't, wouldn't you think, in John 14, 13 it says, Whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do. Whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. Now let me tell you, when God says whatever, and when he says you ask me for anything, it's, it's not like we're saying it. When, when Jesus says it, what he means by everything or anything in my name, he means anything that glorifies God, one, and two, anything that he's already given you. Right? When you're in your relationship with God, you hear the voice of God, God's given to you. That's you, God gives you the right to use his name in those two areas. And, and I need to enforce that because it's not like we just go out there and Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No, it's for his glory. Our lives are for his glory and our prayer is for his glory. So we pray... Uh, if, if you can see something that, that will glorify God or if something and, and you know God's already given it to you he's spoken to you you know you're sick and he's spoken no you're healed you're healed well you start to speak that proclaim it in the name of Jesus and when the name of Jesus is spoken the Holy Spirit responds to that name and starts to work in just like creation you know Jesus said let there be light the Holy Spirit is just hovering and, and not doing anything until that Jesus spoke and, and we speak that same word and the Holy Spirit respond in the same way because we have the same Holy Spirit, do we not? Terrific. A life of signs and wonders following our lives. That surely would do something, would it not? Um, we, we've got communion now, so if the stewards could come forward and bring uh, give out communion. While they do, I'll... I'm doing this a little bit. I want to read something to you, which really inspired me. And uh, you know June that comes along here? Well, June gave me a, a couple of books from Smith Wigglesworth. And uh, so I started to read them. And, and he wrote this, and I just want to read it to you while you, while communion is being served, and, uh, and then we'll pray, all right? So you can sit back and shut your eyes if you like and just absorb this. This is a testimony, right? One day I went up a mountain to pray. I had a wonderful day. It was one of the high mountains of Wales. I heard of one man going up this mountain to pray. The Spirit of God met him so wonderfully that his face shone like that of an angel when he returned. Everyone in the village was talking about it. As I went up the mountain and spent the day in the presence of the Lord, his wonderful power seemed to envelop and saturate me. Sorry, I've got to get this through. Just, uh, can you... Beautiful, thank you. Uh, where are we? Okay. Two years before this time, there had come to our house two lads from Wales. 
They were just ordinary lads, but they became very zealous for God. They came to our mission and saw some of the works of God. They said to me, we would not be surprised if the Lord brings you down to Wales to raise our Lazarus. They explained that the leader of their assembly was a man who had spent his days working in the mines and his nights preaching. And the result was that he had collapsed, gone into consumption, and for four years he had been a helpless invalid having to be fed with a spoon. While I was on that mountain top, I was reminded of the transfiguration scene. And I felt that the Lord's only purpose in taking us into the glory was to fit us for greater usefulness in the valley. The Lord said to me, I want you to go and raise Lazarus. I told the brother who accompanied me of this, and when we got down to the valley, I wrote a postcard. When I was up on the mountain praying today, God told me that I was to go down and raise Lazarus. I addressed the postcard to the man in the place whose name had been given to me by the two lads. When we arrived at the place, we went to the man to whom I had addressed the card. He looked at me and said, did you send this? I said, yes. He said, do you think we believe in this? Here, take it. And he threw it at me. The man called a servant and said, take this man and show him Lazarus. Then he said to me, the moment you see him, you will be ready to go home. Nothing will hold you. Everything he said was true from the natural viewpoint. The man was helpless. He was nothing but a mass of bones with skin stretched over them. There was no life to be seen. Everything in him spoke of decay. It is a blessed thing to learn that God's word can never fail. Never hearken to human plans. God can work mightily when you persist in believing him in spite of discouragements from the human standpoint. When I got back to the man to whom I had sent the postcard, he asked, are you ready to go now? I am not moved by what I see. I am moved only by what I believe. No man looks at appearances if he believes. No man considers how he feels if he believes. The man who believes God has it. Every man who comes into the Pentecostal experience can laugh at all things and believe God. There's something in the Pentecostal work that is different from anything else in the world. Somehow in Pentecost, you know that God is a reality. Wherever the Holy Spirit has right of way, the gifts of the Spirit will be in manifestation. Where these gifts are never in manifestation, I question whether he's present. There were difficult conditions in that wealth village, Welsh village, and it seemed impossible to get the people to believe. Ready to go home, I was asked. But a man and a woman there asked us to come and stay with them. And I said, I want to know how many of you people can pray. No one wanted to pray. I asked if I could get seven people to pray with me for the poor, poor man's deliverance. I said to the two people who were, who were going to entertain us, I'll count on you two and there's a friend and myself, and we need three others. I told the people that I trusted that some of them would awaken to their privilege and come to the morning and join us in prayer for the raising of Lazarus. When we went to the house where Lazarus lived, there was eight of us together. No one can prove to me that God does not always answer prayer. He always does more than that. He always gives the exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. I shall never forget how the power of God fell on us as we went into that sick man's room. Oh, it was lovely. As we circled around the bed, I got one brother to hold one of the sick man's hands, and I held the other, and we each held the hand of the person next to us, and I said, We're not going to pray. We're just going to use the name of Jesus. We all knelt down and whispered that one word, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The power of God fell and then it lifted. Five times the power of God fell and then it remained. But the man in the bed was unmoved. Two years previously, someone had come along and had tried to raise him, raise him up, and the devil had used his lack of success as a means of dis discouraging Lazarus. And I said, I don't care what the devil says. If God says he will raise you up, it must be so. Forget everything else except what God says about Jesus. The sixth time the power fell on the, and the sick man's lips began moving and tears began to fall. I said to him, the power of God's here. 
it is yours to accept. Then he made a confession. I have been bitter in my heart and I know I have breathed the Spirit of God. Here I am, helpless. I cannot lift my hands or even lift a spoon to my mouth. I said, repent and God will hear you. He repented and cried out, O oh God, let this be to your glory. As he said this, the virtue of the Lord went right through him. I've asked the Lord to never let me tell this story except as it was, for I realise that God cannot bless exaggerations. As we again said, Jesus, 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 the bed shook and the man shook. I said to the people that were with me, you can all go downstairs right away. This is all God. I'm not going to assist him. I sat and watched this man get up and dress himself. We sang the doxology and he walked down the steps. I said to him, now, tell what has happened. All this came through the name of Jesus, through faith in his name. Yes, the faith that is by him gave this sick man perfect soundness in the presence of them all. And that is available to all of us. And I know we've probably heard lots of things about the name of Jesus. But it's all very well to, to know it. It's all very well to pray in it. But we also have the, the wonder, the opportunity to seek him for the revelation of his name. And when that comes, he gives you the revelation of who he is. And that revelation becomes a part of you. And so that when you do it, he does it through you. And we can grow and grow in that. Is that not a, an incredible aspect of our lives? It's up to you and I. It's up to us to seek his face for that. <coughs> to simply say, Lord Jesus, I know you as my Lord, my Saviour. I know you, oh wonderful Jesus. I know you and all the wonders of what you've done in my life. But Lord, reveal to me as you did to Moses. Reveal to me your name that I may have in my spirit your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your power, your love, and that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And so as we come to this communion time, that basically sums it up, doesn't it? He, he, gave, he gave his life that we may have his life. The first sermon that Peter preached in the book of Acts, they said, what, what can we do? We, we, how, can, how can we come into this? He said, that you be baptised into his name. Yeah, that means water. But it means so much more than that. Baptised into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Through revelation, where now we have access to the very person of God when we speak the name of Jesus in faith. And so, Father, I want to thank you that you, you provide this and you reveal this to us today. Lord, and you so desire that you could live in through us in a deeper and a greater way. That's why you've given us your name. And so, Lord, I thank you that as we eat of this bread and drink of this wine that represents your invitation your permission to use your name to see greater works done. So Lord, thank you. Let's eat and drink now. Thank you, Lord. Glory to you, Lord. Let me just pray one more prayer too. Lord, while it's deep in our minds, and just to wonder, Lord, I know it's it's simple because it's all done by you. That you would give us that revelation of the depths of your name. Lord, you know our life from the end to the beginning. You know what we're about to face. And it's all covered in your name. So I pray, Lord, for each and every one of us that the aspects that we need of your life to overcome the situations we have in our future. 
Father, light it in our heart, we pray, by the revelation of your Spirit, Lord. And help us, Lord, not to just go home and forget this message and move on to another. But, Lord, to see the significance that when we pray, whenever we, we, we say in the name of Jesus, you cause it to come to us that, hey, there's more than this. It's more than a title. It's a life. Oh, Jesus, cause it to become deeper and deeper in our lives, we pray, Lord God.